Shivani, and I love getting questions from people and students who have challenges in teaching their yoga class. And this question is from Ruth. Ruth contacted me on Facebook, and she wants to know about inversions, particularly handstand for bigger body people. And I have some strategies that I thought you might find useful. One thing about a mixed level class that you have to get used to as a teacher is allowing everybody in the class to do something that's slightly different. So you're going to provide drills, strategies, and opportunities for people to get stronger in their practice. So when you look out in your class, in this particular part of the um, segment of your class where you're doing inversions or handstands, you may be seeing a few different things, and you need to be okay with that. So for this particular tutorial, you'll need three blocks, um, if you have them. It's really helpful. And we're going to start first with a prep for hand or for handstand. So I'm going to come up into L, and what I'm going to show you is how you can kind of convince your students or show your students that they're strong enough to get up into L. So you'll come onto your hands and knees. And what I like to do first is sit with my feet against the wall, measure my feet out, place my hands on either side of my hips, and then flip over, marking the spot on my hands. Now I'm going to ask Alan, which is my husband, to come into the shot and hold my shoulder blades on my black. And I'll let you know when to do that, Alan. So you spread your fingertips out, lengthen the sides of your body, squeeze between your shoulder blades, and come up into a short down dog. So for some of your students, just getting used to going upside down is enough. So this may be all they're comfortable with. And then you can have them just take one leg up the wall. Okay? And you can have them go up pretty far pushing into their hands, squeezing between their shoulder blades. Once they're comfortable with that, the next step I would take them to is L at the wall. So everything else applies. You'll see how wide my hands are out. Outer shoulder lines up with the center of the wrist. Fingertips are out nice and wide, gripping into the mat, hugging the arms together, lengthening the sides of the body, squeezing between the shoulder blades and coming up. So then I just step up at height. Now Alan's going to kneel in front of me and place his hands on my shoulder blades, holding them onto my back. So he's going to kneel a little bit higher up, Alan. And he's going to push the shoulder blades together on my back, and I'm going to soften toward the wall. Now this gives your students confidence because you're holding them or assisting them coming up. So if you have students who are more comfortable with doing handstand, you can leave them to their devices. And if you have a student who's maybe a little bit bigger or a little bit nervous, you can have the assist. So I'm going to ask Alan to come back into the shot and prep for L at the wall. So measure yourself out first. So he's going to place his feet right against the wall, hands on either side of the hips, mark your hands, and then flip over. Good. So now, spread your fingertips out nice and wide, feet right back to the baseboard, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, and then soften between your shoulder blades. Now I place my hands right here, and I'm hugging his shoulder blades together. So come into your short down dog, and I'll show you from here. So I'm finding the lower tips of his shoulder blades, and I'm using some strength as the teacher to hold them together. Now he can step one foot up the wall, whichever he's most comfortable with, and then the other about hip height for me, honey. Yes. Push into the wall, and then step up. And then you can hold their shoulder blades onto their back, Firm your quadriceps, you can walk your feet up just a little bit more. Good, lift your sitting bones to the sky. They feel really supported here, so this may be a way you can convince them to try. Beautiful, and then when you're ready, make sure they come all the way down. And the last technique I would offer, thanks honey, is uh, the block situation. This is again, kind of a modified headstand or a modified forearm stand. So if everybody's going up upside down in the class, you can also give them this technique. And I may need Alan to come and help me up with a leg up as a, um, a resource. So you'll take one block, I have the blue block, and you'll have it about, I don't know, a few inches away from the wall. And then you see how I'm stacking it lengthwise? Then I stack two blocks on top to support the upper back. So now, the block on the bottom is away from the wall, and the two blocks on top are flush with the wall. So now, I'm going to come down onto my forearm. So all the um, energy is in my shoulder girdle. I'm going to wrap my hands around the block, push down through my forearms, take my head to the block. Now I'll lift my hips, come up and walk in. So see how supported I am um, between my shoulder blades? And I'm just energetically pulling the block back. 
So you might have your students just play with this because at least they're going upside down. Then you can give them an assist. You can lift one leg up. I'm going to ask Alan to come and securely grab onto my leg. So you want somebody to grab onto the leg that's lifted and have a lot of energy. So I want you to let me push down as I lift up. So push. Yeah, you need your person to be really secure when they're doing that. And then you can lift up with both legs. And I mean, this is really easy. Now that's an assist if they're not comfortable kicking up. If they are comfortable kicking up, then you, there's no weight on your head. You can just allow them to kick up if they like. Okay? And this is them getting used to being upside down. And as a bigger body person, they'll be upside down with everybody else in the class. There's no weight on the head. All the weight is into the shoulder girdle. And they can get used to using these techniques to be part of the class. So, Ruth, I hope you found these helpful. If you have any questions, you can contact me at dianebondyyoga at gmail.com. And I'll put a link in the description box. You can also check me out for more tips and ideas. We have all kinds of videos on yogastayup.com. And I'll also put that at the link below. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you find these helpful. And um, please, if you like them, hit like on the bottom of the screen. Okay, talk to you soon. Namaste.